We are on part two of chapter three, Nature and Nurture. So experience and um, facilities. So what we're looking at here, um, what we look at is we look at children and we look at music, language, and the arts actually improving um, a child's early experience. So the arts is pretty important. Um, having some sort of involvement in your child's life early on, allowing that brain to continue to develop, like we discussed with neuroscience, is very important. So, to, <clears throat> excuse me, brain development in adulthood, it never really stops growing. What you're going to see about a brain is that it needs to continue to actually develop. Um, so it does not stop when we reach adulthood. That's the big importance. So that's why I've, you need to learn something every single day. Parental influence. When we're looking at children, we look at risk factors like children who are raised in very risky, like risk taker homes, those kids will also become risk takers. So your parents do influence you genetic, but they can also influence you in the environmental way. Of course, as children, your peers are very important as well. And so when we look at your peers, what we're looking at is a parental influence here, the peer influence. So um, some of your parents, they might be picking your friends, but most of you pick your own friends. And peers influence us in ways like the way we cooperate with other people, how we gain popularity, and how we interact. There's also cultural influences. Um, remember what we'll look at is like in Eastern cultures, there's a big adherence to family and the group, the group, the cultural uh, influence, so the collectivists. In the West, where we are, we're more individualist, and so that kind of influences our behaviors and our attitudes and our values. So here in the West, what we focus on is you doing the best you can. Um, in countries like in, in Asian countries, what we see is the group is the most important. When we look at variations across cultures, um, there are some cultural norms. Uh, these are just accepted rules and expected behaviors for people. Uh, so here in America, we have a personal space bubble. We like a huge personal space around us. And then when you look at countries like Saudi Arabia, there's not as much personal space as there is um, here in America. Variations over time. So cultures do change over time. Um, when you're looking at our culture change in Western countries, we've seen a vast uh, change, a rapid change over the last 40 years. And some of this could be attributed to the human genome pool, but genes actually evolve very slowly. So it seems like maybe it's more about your environment than that. So culture and the self, the individualist and the collectivist. The individualist is someone who looks at being the best they can be. And a collectivist looks at identifying with the group. So here's just a real nice handy little chart of how collectivists and individualists look at things. Um, you can look at it in your textbook. Culture and child rearing. Um, individualist cultures like here, Europe, the United States. We raise our children to be independent. In Asian cultures in the um, East, they kind of raise their kids to look at being interdependent and being a group, the collectivist. So developmental similarities across groups. Um, despite diverse cultural backgrounds, humans are more similar than we are different in most ways. We share the same genetic profile, life cycle, capacity for language, and biological needs. So gender develop, genetic makeup, males and females are alike. You know, since the majority of our inherited genes, 45 chromosomes, are unisex, they're similar. Males and females differ biologically and body fat. Females have more body fat than males. Uh, muscles, males will have more muscles. Height, males are taller than females. Onset of puberty, puberty um, females will reach puberty before males and life expectancy. Uh, women right now are outliving males. Gender differences in aggression. Men express their aggression um, more in their behavior than females. Females are the passive, the verbalized. Men will actually show their aggression in a physical manner. Uh, so in most society, men are socially dominant and are perceived as such. Um, when you look at who's actually in government, 84% of men in 2005, so a, a huge portion of our governments around the world are male-dominated. 
Gender differences in correctiveness. Young and old women form more connections, friendships with people than men. Uh, men seem to be more on self-reliance and freedom. So more about Emerson maybe than females. Females have the close friendships and will maintain close friendships throughout their life. Biological sex is determined by the 23rd pair of chromosome. So if the pair is XX, a female, XY, the male, um, and the male is the one who actually determines the birth, of uh, the sex of the baby. So sexual differentiation in the mother's womb, the male fetus is exposed to testosterone because of the Y chromosome, which leads to a male baby. If there's low levels of testosterone, they're going to be released in the uterus. The result is going to be the female. So sexual differentiation is not only biological, but it's also psychological and social. Genes and hormones play a very big role in determining and defining our gender. Um, so what we look at here is gender role, gender identity. Gender role is how we are supposed to behave. So it's the expectation of how men and women are supposed to behave. Gender identity means how a person views him or herself in terms of gender. So gender role is how culture says you're supposed to be. Gender identity is how you see yourself. So gender schema and the social learning theory. So gender schema suggests that we learn a cultural recipe of how to be a male or a female. And so what this is saying is, is that there's a recipe for how to be a guy. So guys don't cry, men don't cry. Um, and females, they're supposed to cook clean and look pretty. That's the cultural recipe. Social learning theory proposes that we learn gender behavior like any other behavior through reinforcement, punishment, and observation. So if a boy cries, his dad might say, be a man, suck it up. Okay? And so because he said suck it up and be a man, he's going to get the punishment of, um, of a scolding or a negative reproach from dad. So reflections on nature and nurture, remember we always look at the biological, psychological, and social cultural influences. So biological, the DNA, psychological is your mind, and then the social cultural influences society and culture. And that's the end of chapter 3.